Texas cottage food laws. So how do I sell my homemade food legally in Texas from my home? So in this video from Cottage Foods Laws, YouTube's premier home-based food entrepreneur channel, we are dedicated to you, the homemade food entrepreneur. We are going to dive into specifically what you can do in Texas. We're going to run down how much you can sell, what you can make, and what you cannot make and so much more. So you want to definitely check out the full video. My name is Damien Roberti. I'm a food entrepreneur. I have six e-commerce food businesses online. I have had my own businesses for almost 14 years now. My wife and I, Sylvia, uh, started our YouTube channels to dedicate solely to food entrepreneurs. We actually have multiple channels. Check out the links down in the description below the video. We have our Marketing Food Online channel. It has over 125,000 food entrepreneurs subscribed just like you, and they are making money selling their food products with our guidance. Now, also, if you need additional consulting, we actually have a consulting one-hour phone call you can take up with me. You can check that link also down below in the description. I've actually helped launch over 700 small food businesses since 2017, and we can definitely help you out as well. So let's run down really quick to understand what the Texas Cottage Food Law is. In September 2013, uh, Texas adopted an amendment, actually HB 970, to modify their cottage food law significantly easing the previous restrictions. So it was a little bit restrictive um, at first, but this actually helped relax some of those laws to help more and more people start food businesses directly from their homes. Then in 2019, they further expanded the law for another additional amendment, uh, the SB 572. Now today, actually, Texas boasts a well-crafted cottage food law, providing ample opportunities for producers to sell their goods anywhere in the state even venturing into online sales and delivering within the state of Texas. Now, compared to most states now, Texas permits a, permits a wider range of foods and remarkably, as a matter of fact, even allows for the sale of frozen produce, setting a precedence in the world of traditional cottage food laws. Now, despite the positives, the law does have a couple of primary limitations. So first, the annual sales cannot exceed $50,000. Now, that's really not a lot uh, compared to some states that have an unlimited amount, which means you can sell a million dollars. But hey... $50,000 extra onto your paycheck in a year is pretty good. Secondly, indirect sales, such as those through retail or grocery stores, are not permitted. Now, there's a lot of cottage food laws in other states where you can sell your homemade food products to even restaurants, uh, retail stores, um, and grocery stores as well. But this, unfortunately, in Texas, you can't. Now, an interesting aspect is that no licenses from the health department is necessary. However, producers and their employees must complete a food handler's training course, ensuring a relatively straightforward process for most individuals to commence selling homemade food. Now, let's dive into what kind of foods we can sell, guys. Many states have a very long list, so let's get into that. Actually, before we dive into that, you're probably asking where. Let's get into where you can sell first. Uh, number one, allowed places where you can sell uh, events, local events in your city or county. You can sell online, uh, delivered in person or picked up by the person. Also cannot ship over state lines. Uh, farmers markets are always great. Those are good to go. Keep in mind, though, that even though there's certain regulations and laws with cottage food, farmers markets, people who own the markets themselves may have other requirements. So you want to ask for sure up front. They may have to have a business license, may have to have other permitting, some type of that thing. That is actually dictated by the owner of the farmers market. So be, keep that in mind. Now, you can sell in roadside stands as well. Um, you can also, like I mentioned, deliver or home pickup. So if you're comfortable with people coming to your home um, in Texas, which I personally am not exactly a big fan of, but you can definitely do that if you are comfortable. They can come to your house and just pick up the food if they've ordered it. Now, some of the prohibited ways, as I mentioned before, restaurants or retail stores and wholesale. Now, if you're not familiar with wholesale, that means that you can't necessarily sell your food product in bulk or sell a lot of it at a discounted price. That would be wholesale. That's actually what happens. Like if you sell it to a retail store, they want to buy it at wholesale. That is prohibited in Texas. Okay, let's dive into what are some of the foods, Damien? What are some of the foods that you can actually sell? I'm really interested because I have a huge list of things, but I'm not sure what to make. Now, bagels, cakes, muffins, and biscuits. You can do brownies, donuts, rolls, or tortillas. You can do sweetbreads. Uh, just keep in mind, though, sweetbreads, things that have uh, what are time or temperature sensitive, you can't have. So if you make a sweetbread and it has, let's say, cheese inside of it or cheese on top of it, that has to be refrigerated. If you have a protein, you know, like meat or ground beef, that cannot be on those because that is actually a hazardous... Uh, but considered a potentially hazardous food product because it has to be either refrigerated or eaten within a certain period of time. Uh, cookies, pizzelles, uh, like I said before, muffins and biscuits. Now keep in mind, I'm going to give you this list, but from this list, you can create hundreds of variations depending on how creative you are with food. Next up is brittles, like nut brittles, peanut brittle, almond brittle, cashew brittle, uh, confections with alcohol. Keep in mind, some cities and states actually don't allow any type of alcohol in the actual uh, product as an ingredient. But when you bake a product with alcohol, predominantly most of the alcohol itself bakes out. It's just a flavor that's left. 
uh, candies, cotton candy, chocolate fudge, truffles, uh, honey, nut butters, salsas, vinegars, ketchup, uh, oils, uh, oils that don't include any type of uh, mixtures with garlic. Keep that in mind, too. Garlic, unfortunately, is not allowed. Uh, pickles, syrups, mustards, sauces. You could do tea leaves. Uh, keep in mind, though, if you could sell coffee beans as well, coffee and tea, you cannot sell the actually pre-made drink. So you can't bottle like a coffee drink, for instance, like you know Starbucks does or mass-produced products. You'd have to be in a commercial setting for that. So tea leaves as well, but not tea that's made. So if you're into making sweet tea, you wanted to bottle it, you have your own brand, you know, your own flavor, your own twist, you can't sell bottled drinks that way. Okay, Dried fruits, spices, and seasonings. That is huge, by the way. Gigantic market for spices and seasoning. Pasta noodles, dried vegetables, and cereals. Um, next up is whole eggs, fermented foods, uh, frozen produce, uh, pastries, cones, pies, uh, danishes. Now, keep in mind pastries. Uh, you, again, you can't have something that has to be refrigerated because you can't take it to a farmer's market, set that refrigerated product on a table for hours and try to sell it. That is a time or temperature sensitive item. Keep these in mind. Okay. Acid acidified foods, um, applesauce, marmalades, jams and jellies, uh, fruit butters. Next up, snacks. So what kind of snack do you have? Popcorn, kettle corn. You can, do, you can do nuts and seeds, granola, chocolate-covered items, vegetable chips, fruit leathers, caramel corns, crackers and pretzels, and veggie chips. Okay, now we've got over the – we covered the items that you can actually make. Let's go a little bit into what you cannot make. You've got to keep this in mind too. Perishable baked goods, carbonated drinks, pet treats or pet foods, juices. Uh, we mentioned that before. So fresh juices, I get that a lot on our other um, YouTube channel. Hey, can I make these juices from home, Damien? Well, due to the pasteurization and bottling processes that are involved – uh, fresh juices are normally not allowed under cottage food laws, okay? So if you have a great juice idea or you wanted to create a whole bunch of juices and then put them in a bottle with a lid and cap and seal, that you'd have to be in a commercial kitchen as well. So meat jerkies, kombucha, um, low acid canned foods, that is something you cannot do as well. So those are items you cannot do. Um, so let's dive into some of the other limitations. Now, keep in mind, when you start this from home, you can't have any commercial equipment, okay? That would mean like, commercial bread mixers or commercial ovens that are gigantic, the kind that you find in a bakery. Those are types of equipment that are not allowed. You have to just really use what you have at home or small countertop kitchen aids and so on. Direct sales only. Uh, commercial kitchen prohibited, so you can't build a commercial kitchen, by the way, on your property or in your house. You know, some people I get questions all the time as well. Hey, can I turn my garage into a commercial kitchen? 99.9% .9 of the time, the answer is no, Okay. Uh, some states may allow you to do a basement, but specifically, you'd have to have a separate kitchen and a separate commercial uh, license for that. Interstate sales are prohibited. Uh, primary residence. So keep in mind, you have to make this specifically at your home. It's very important to remember, you can't go to a friend's house on the weekend, bake a bunch of stuff and sell it. It has to be the home that you are specifically living in. And also keep in mind the sales limit. You cannot go above the sales limit. You also want to keep track, by the way. If you're selling $50,000 a year from Texas Cottage Food from home and you spent $20,000 on ingredients and packaging, you made $30,000 profit, guess what? That is taxable. That is considered income. So you want to double check with your accountant. Make sure they know you're operating a food business from home. And, you know, hey, Damien, I made $30,000 profit. Well, you're going to have to pay taxes on that because that's income. Uh, don't try to get around that. You just don't want to get in trouble with the IRS and everybody else. So. So the sales limit is 50000 as I mentioned earlier, which is not that bad, but, I mean, it could be a little bit better. Um, Florida, I think, just raised theirs to 250000 There's a few other states that are unlimited, so if you, you know, sold a million dollars out of your house, oh, good for you. But keep track of all your receipts. Keep track of all that. Now, a really quick side note on the business aspect of a commercial kitchen or cottage food kitchen, I'm sorry, cottage food business. You want to get yourself an LLC, a limited liability corporation. You want to create an LLC and incorporate yourself and get yourself some business insurance. Now, these are not requirements, okay, from the state. This is what I've always recommended, though, because you don't have any legal protection if somebody gets sick and sues you because they got sick or they were in the hospital or whatever the case may be, and it comes back to your business and if there's a problem, that means that they could sue you personally. You could lose your house and everything you own. This is not a joke. You definitely do not want to take that part, take it seriously, and make sure you get an LLC because basically what you're doing is separating the liability factor from your personal life uh, into your business, okay? Now, you and your employees must take an accredited training program for food handlers. It's a few-hour course. I think it's around $20 if I'm not mistaken. Um, so keep that in mind as well. All right, Damien, so how do I label my food products when I make it from home? I know that there's a guideline in labeling. What needs to be on the label? Good question. Allergens. So you want to make sure that your label has allergens. Now, this is what it, this means is traditionally the FDA will regulate any uh, commercially packaged food product that is on the grocery shelves at stores. 
right? So you want to make sure that you have allergen labels. So if somebody's allergic to milk, eggs, peanuts, tree nuts, wheat, or soy, just put it on the label just to be safe, okay? If you cross-contaminate something, meaning that you have a mixing bowl that maybe had uh, peanuts in it and somebody's allergic to it and they get very sick and go into anaphylactic shock, that is something that could be a problem. So just put that on your label so people know. Uh, the next one is business address. Now, this cannot be a P.O. box. You need to make sure that you have the business home address on your labels. This will actually let everybody know that this is a home-based business, not something commercially made. Next up is your business name. So if your name, your business, let's say it was Danian's Granola Business, and I was making granola. That is the name of the business, not the product name, which you do, by the way, I'll get to in a moment. But the business name itself, if it's Damien's Granola Business, good for you. That needs to be on the label. Now the next thing is the product name. So let's say you're making chocolate chip cookies or sugar cookies or peanut butter cookies. That is the name of the product, not the business. Don't get that mixed up. Um, also a statement. you got to put a statement, a little disclosure statement saying, look, this product was produced at a home. That's not inspected by any um, county or city. Um, it's also not commercially made. It's made inside of a home. So the person buying it at, let's say, the farmer's market, a local stand, wherever it may be, they understand that it's not made in a commercial kitchen, okay? Now, if you sell online, you also have to inform customers of all the labeling information. So your website needs to also contain all of that information, by the way, okay? So that's a good gist, a good rundown of what you can do, how you can make and how much you can sell, uh, specifically in the state of Texas. If you're in Texas and you're looking to start a home-based food business, uh, also let us know down below where are you at with the process. If you've already started a business, uh, tell us how successful you've been. Let us know some of the barriers and stuff that you had to get into. Um, if you have questions for us here at Cottage Food Laws, let us know also in the comments section. And these videos right here, these are uh, some additional resources to help you get up and running. Check out our other channels, guys. Also, we have a food truck channel too. If you have someone you know wants to start a food truck business, let them know. Share with them our Food Truck Freaks channel. It's all about food trucks. So I'll see you guys in our next video.